Welcome back to AFTV. We're here for another preview. Arsenal travel to Leicester. We won at Aston Villa 4-2. We left it late. It was very dramatic, but Arsenal did get the win over the line. Big thanks to Tommy Martinez. I'm not going to stop mentioning it because I am that petty. Uh, but it is a trip to Leicester. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff on Saturday 25th in their 32,000 seater King Power Stadium. And I'm here, with Robbie, to look ahead to it. Looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to it. Well, am I? You know, I mean, these games are so. So nervy now. Yeah. It's unbelievable. We yeah. all saw the game last week. Um, what an incredible comeback by Arsenal twice. We showed a lot of character. We showed a lot of metal and um, got over the line. And I think now we're going to play a team that's very similar um, in Leicester. Um, that They're very good at attacking, but probably a bit vulnerable at the back. And again, it gives us an opportunity to get points on the board. I think we played before City again, don't we? I believe that's right, um, yeah. I'll just have so, to So, you know, it's a chance again <clears throat> to put pressure on Manchester City. And, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day and saying that, you know, our win against um, our win against Aston Villa put pressure on them. And they're like, no, they died, City. That didn't do anything to them. They just played badly. I said, you don't, you don't, Understand it is pressure, even mm -hmm. for a team like Manchester City. You know what I mean? Uh, all of a sudden, you're you, you were top of the league, going into um, you see the Arsenal game, you see they're dropping points. You're probably thinking this is looking good for us. Yep. You see um, the comeback, and then you're thinking, right, we have to go and do our job. And then does that psychologically make you sort of snatch at a few chances? That because they did have a lot of chances yeah. in that game. That could be the pressure of Arsenal winning earlier on and then all of a sudden the pendulum swings back a little bit towards Arsenal. So yeah. I, I, I just feel that this is what we've got to keep doing. we just got to keep putting the pressure on Manchester City um, and it's going to be ups and downs and horrible mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> all yeah. the way till the Strap end. This is, our, this is our title races pan out. You're not like eight points clear from now till the end of the season with games in hand. It don't work like that, no. you know? So um, it's a very, very, very important game for Arsenal because it will set us up nicely going into that game against Everton, which is our game in hand. Mm -hmm. So, but that game in hand is only going to mean something if we win, in yeah. my opinion, you know what I mean? So massive game, massive. Yeah, so they travelled to Bournemouth at 5.30. Um, right. Bournemouth have had a, I mean, they, they took points off Newcastle recently. They've had a funny season, Bournemouth, actually, but you yeah. never know. But it's about Arsenal-Leicester. It's about, you know, Arsenal building on the, um, not, I wouldn't say momentum of the Villa game, but certainly the way that ended, you know, it ended with two late goals, real euphoria. And actually, I think Arsenal would have benefited from a week off. They had so much, you know, pressure and stress with the Everton defeat, then Brentford, then the, the big man City tie. Almost once that was all out of the way and they had to respond to Villa, they got that win. I think actually just a week off just to kind of sit on it, get back to training and go, okay, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind, but we're back in this position of two points ahead with a game in hand. Um, let's just all focus on Leicester and hopefully that time off would have just settled them down. They're ready to get going again. Yeah, no, listen, I, I think that was a momentum game, you know what I mean? Because had we have lost that game, our momentum would have completely gone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we'd be looking at it and thinking, what, three defeats in the last four games yeah. and stuff like that. All those stats start getting thrown around. All of a sudden, it's a big win. Back to the top of the league. Momentum's back again. Belief's back again. You know, and I think it was even significant, the, the guys who got the who got us over the line in that game. Jorginho, who, yeah. you know, these fans have been thinking, oh, I don't know, man, another Chelsea op. Why did we get um, Jorginho? He goes and, you know, cracks that goal. Fantastic. But also the person who set him up, mm -hmm. um, Martinelli, came on, had a great impact, set up that goal. You know what I mean? Because Jorginho called for it. He passed it out right on the edge of the box. And then the winning goal, Martinelli's back on the scoring sheet. So again... A good feeling around the place. Vieira Martin, assist too. Vieira assist as well. Yeah. So again, you know, what I mean, good feelings for some some players that might have been confidence will be a bit low to say to themselves that you know what, in the next game, give me the ball, mm -hmm. I can do it. Puts a little doubt in Leicester's mind as well. If we go into that game on the back of um, a defeat or in the back of a, a draw, mm -hmm. you know, Leicester's tactics might be well, let's just completely frustrate them. Mm -hmm. You know, because they cannot afford. 
to do anything but win this. We saw it. Now all of a sudden Leicester are thinking, oh, you know what? Look at the character they showed and this and that. How do we approach this? Should we, should we go all out attack? Should we be a bit more conservative? You know what I mean? It puts a lot of doubt in Leicester's mind as well. Yep. So I, I, I cannot stress how important that win was. And I think the manner of the win and the comeback and everything was superb by Arsenal. The character shown. Had that have been City that had done that, everybody would be lauding them and saying, mentality monsters. Yeah, completely That's agree. exactly what we showed. I completely agree. Let's remind ourselves of the table. Arsenal, I said in the last preview that we filmed at Villa Park, it was the first time in a long time I had to read that Arsenal was second in the table. <laughs> but that has corrected itself very quickly. Arsenal back top on 54 points. We mentioned that game in hand. We do have two points. Clear. We are two points clear of Manchester City. Leicester sitting 14th on 24 points. And having a really weird season, Leicester, because we'll, we'll touch on... Well, actually, let's do it now. Let's look at the last five results. It starts with a defeat at Manchester United very recently. I want to touch on that game in a sec. But they did beat Tottenham 4-1. Yep. They did win 4-2 at Villa as well, like yep. we did. They, they did it with a little more ease than we did in fairness. Um, a 2-2 draw with Brighton, which with the way Brighton are playing isn't a terrible result. But they did lose 2-0 at Forest. So... It's actually a complete mess of the last five games. You can't yeah. really read much into that. Yeah. Um, and then you, you mentioned Man City. I mean, City, it took a De Bruyne a free kick to, to beat Leicester at the King Power because yeah. they went into quite Remember a deep shape. So they're a funny team, Leicester. You don't know what you're going to get from them. Yeah. I, I think that when, when they went into a really deep shape, I think that was early on when, in, when yeah. they were really struggling. Yeah, they were. Right yeah. down at the bottom and they had to try something different. I don't know. I think they'll be... I think they'll come out a bit more in this game. Although, as I said... Will their mindset have changed a bit after seeing that Villa game, seeing mm. how attacking Arsenal can be, how we create a lot of chances? Or the United so, game maybe as well? Could that yeah. be in their mind? Because they, they started that game brilliantly. You had a lot of chances, but then you know that, that you're open to that ball in behind or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and then they, after did play, that, they started know. the game well, and it was the yeah. hair really who kept United in the game. But they got, got at, I think Leicester can be got at defensively. The last, was it, well, the last four times we've played Leicester, we've beaten them. That's yeah. a great stat. That, that gives us a lot of confidence going into that game. That Even though the King Power is a difficult place to go to, we know we can go there and win. We had a great win there last year. I remember that was a great performance. Mm -hmm. um, Ramsdale had to pull off a great save. We were there, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, a good yeah. one. Yeah. But it was a very good performance by Arsenal. I think it's 2-0, wasn't it right? Yeah, so um, you, you mentioned, sorry, the head-to-head. -head. I mean, I might as well just read it out. It was a 4-2 win at Leicester earlier this season. We beat them 2-0 at the Emirates last season. We won 2-0 last season. It was the Smith Rowe and Gabriel yeah. goals. Uh, and then we even won 3-1 at the King Power before that. Willian probably played his best performance <laughs> in Arsenal shirt that day. Uh, I think Pepe got a goal, Odegaard played well. Um, but then before that was the 1-0 defeat again behind closed doors mm. with a late Vardy header. So yeah, four wins in five. And actually, just before that was a win in the Carabao Cup, a 2-0 win at the King Power. So I think we've won our last three there. Yeah, we've got a very good record against um, Leicester away um, in recent times. Mm. So that gives us confidence. And we're still playing good football. And as I said... Um, the confidence that we would have got from winning that game last week. And I do think Leicester, even though you are right, I remember that game when they played a low block against Manchester City. I'm not convinced that they'll do that against, against us. Um, no. I, I just feel that they will come at us a bit more, which poses a problem because they are a very good attacking team. Yep. Harvey Barnes, Ian Nacho has been playing really well. We've got to defend better. Our mm -hmm. defending... Yeah, over the I agree. past few games has been poor. Yeah. And, you know, we've made far too many mistakes and we've been punished for them. And they've got players that can punish us. So, but I feel if Arsenal can really get to grips with our defending again and tighten up the defence, we've got a chance of getting three points there, which would be huge. Absolutely massive. You also got, remember, Man United in the background starting to, agree, yeah. to chase us down. Again, United don't play this weekend. So a chance for Arsenal, to, again, to put a bit of daylight between us and them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge, huge game. You know what I mean? Absolutely massive for Arsenal. But then for a team like Leicester, after their defeat last week, they're not out of the relegation fight, even though they look like... They look better know, than the rest. Look, yeah. yeah, they look better than the rest. They've got more quality. They look, they've got a little gap, but they're still not completely, completely clear. So I think Arsenal really really need to get a win in this game. Mm -hmm. um, 
Listen, every game's a must win. Every yeah, well, that, that's the nature win. of a title race. Yeah. One, some of the quality that you, you reference there comes in the form of James Madison. And, you know, he quality. returns and they score eight goals in two games. Yeah. Um, got a goal against Tottenham as well. I think got one at Villa Park. Um, but he's just a player that, I've got to be honest, I, I love the profile of a James Madison. He's a creator, he's a goal scorer. He can play in a midfield three, he can play as a 10, he can play out wide, he can beat a man, though it's not the thing he's most known for. He's just superb off both feet. Both feet. I, I just think- Brilliant from set pieces. Brilliant from set pieces. A player I'd love at Arsenal, I have to be honest. Yeah. And I think he could actually compliment some of the midfielders we've got, but that's a discussion mm. for another day. Less fans won't appreciate that. But, you know, he, he is someone that, I said we've got to keep quiet, but it then raises the question of, well, do we bring a Thomas Partey in immediately, even though Jorginho played well, you want a Partey to be a part of that battle as well. Mm. How do you see that if he's fit? Yeah, this is a really interesting discussion because, um, you know, Thomas Partey, and we, we, I was having this discussion with Lee on the Invincible podcast. Thomas Partey is a top quality player, but Lee was saying that he probably side on leaving him you know, for the Everton game, unless he's fully, fully fit. Yeah. I think a fully fit Thomas Partey has to come back into the team. Yeah. But it's very difficult to leave out Jorginho after the high he's going to be on. Yeah. So could there be an argument possibly for bringing in a Jorginho and giving Granit Xhaka a little rest because he's played Maybe. so many games and then playing a Partey and Jorginho. But then if, George, if, if Partey's not fit, then Jorginho continues in that role. But certainly Jorginho, you know what I mean? It wasn't just the goal he scored. Mm. He was making a lot of very confident passes. You know, he, he, he just looked a little bit more creative than he did when he was at Chelsea. Uh, I've got to say, know? I thought he looked brilliant on the ball. I thought the yeah. amount of times he... There was in the first half where he pinged the ball over to Ben White and, and White tried to cross it for Eddie. Not sure what happened there. But then some of the balls into Saka, he kept finding Tommy Assi on the overlap as well. Mm. I thought his passing was brilliant. And it actually, was. It was. It's one of those where you want party in the game, but, you know, we, we pray nothing happens. Say we go 1-0 down. You... I mean, Jorginho's shown something that's suggesting the final third he might have more impact. Yeah, no, listen, um, this is these are great problems to have. Yeah, right? true. We, this is what we, you know, we we we've been scared every time Thomas Partey gets a little knock, mm -hmm. you know, um, because we've got no no backup for him, and the backup's a serious drop if Jorginho can come in and do a job. And as I said, his confidence is going to be sky high after last week. The fans are going to be singing his name, you know. Um, I think I would like to see him start the game, but if Thomas Partey's fully fit, you can't leave Thomas Partey out. So, um, but it's a good problem to have. It is, it, we're starting to see a bit more strength in depth yeah. when it comes to the Arsenal team, you know what I mean? Um, Trossard, Martinelli arguments will continue this week. Who mm -hmm. starts? Do you bring on Martinelli as an impact? Or does he come in from the start? He scored. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's going to bring a bit of his confidence back. Because I think his confidence has been a bit knocked yeah, I agree. in recent weeks. So, um, yeah, we've got to get at them defensively. It needs to be a fast start at Leicester. It's the sort of place that if you get off to a fast start, get a, you know, a goal or so in front, it really does put them under a lot of pressure. Because they haven't been playing well. I think I saw... Let me see if I can find it. I was, it was quite an unbelievable record for them... Um, at home that I was looking at earlier on. Um, I think I lost it now. Um, yeah, they've won three of their last 11 um, league games this season. Wow. Um, but it was even worse. Was that at home or is that just in all comps? Um, what's it? They, they, they don't look the same team they've, yeah. they've been, you know, in the years before you look at the the times that Brendan Rodgers had them on the brink of getting into the top four. They had indeed E. Tielemans, Madison. And they've mixed things up there with, with Mendy and Dewsbury Hall and, and whoever it might be, Samara came in. So I think they're still finding mm. their feet a little bit. But I think since bringing Madison back, signing Tete as well, then they brought Sutar in, who's playing at centre-back over Amate alongside uh, we, uh, mm. Wes Fass. Is that his first name? Um, Fass, yeah. Yeah, they, they, you know, they found a degree of solidity and balance in their team. So I agree with you. I think if we can get an early goal, then that's not what Arsenal have been doing yeah. recently. Although, oh, yeah. Leicester have lost more Premier League games from winning positions than any other side. OK, Five. well, there you go. So that shows you that, actually. <laughs> so, but listen, we want to get off to a fast start. We want to get off to be... We want to be in the lead. I think we want them to open up, basically. Yeah, yeah, We want yeah. them almost... Even though if we go punch for punch, there's every chance that with the quality they have, they can hurt us. I think it will open up the game and we want to be able yeah. to... 
you know, be able to hurt them as well. I can see this being high scoring. Yeah. Um, do you want to get a score prediction in before we do the... <sighs> I'm going to go... I don't think it's high scoring. I think it's going to be 3-1. Yeah. You know, because I just feel... I'd, I, I'd be really surprised if they approach this game in a real defensive manner. I don't think they've got the greatest defence. Mm -hmm. They've got some good defensive individuals, mm -hmm. but I don't think they've got the greatest of defence. You saw how easy it was for United to get in behind them. Um, so I, I think there's goals in this game. They're not going to... They're not going to be an Everton. They're not going to be a Burnley mm -hmm. where, you know, they go long with everything and that. They're just not that type of team. So I'm going 3-1. 3-1. I went 2-2 on forever Arsenal, but... That's sort of tapping into the old ritual thing because I said to, yeah. I said a draw at Villa um, and we won. But who knows? Oh, anyway. you're keeping the ritual going. Yeah, all that. Well, <laughs> I brought it back. I fell so far away in the league table, prediction table, that I thought I'd leave it. A bit of injury news to leave you with. We do know that Gabriel Jesus is still out, but we wonder whether he's closing in on a return. It's talk that he's back in training, like in starting to get back into full training now. Yeah. If we can, this again, if we can go on a little run of winning some of these games, mm -hmm. then get him back. Yep, unbelievable. In for the push towards the end of the season. I mean, it would be so, so... It'd yeah. be like having a brand new player. It would be. It's, it's, it's so important. To, and, you know, Smith Rowe could be in as well. Mm -hmm. These guys... He is back. Yeah, these guys coming back and playing a part could be so important for us. As I said, the squad's looking a bit deeper now. Yeah. You've got a Trossard in there. We still haven't seen his Kivio. I know play, you know what I mean? Like hopefully, probably in the Europa League, we'll get to see him. So, um, but Jesus, I keep saying this, every time I do a video, people do not realise that we've been missing our key player for mm. the last three months. I know, yeah. Imagine United without Rashford for three months. Yeah, I hear it. Imagine I hear it. Har Noah Haaland for three months. Mm -hmm. That is how well this Arsenal team have been doing with our squad. When people say, Look at our squad and say, oh, we, we are done that. that's proof that we must have a good squad, that we have coped with that yeah, I can for the imagine. over three months. Mm -hmm. But we need him back. If we can get him back for that final push, we've got a big chance of um, yeah. doing something special this Completely year. Completely agree. Let's hope he's back soon. Don't think there'll be any uh, magical surprises come Leicester <laughs> in terms of Jesus being on the bench or anything like that. But I don't think he's as far away. It's the kind of thing Arsenal would keep very quiet as well. If he was close, they'd be keeping mm. it very, very quiet. Um, so we will see. We do know our nenny's out. Partey could be back. Uh, Smith Rowe is back. So that's really the injury news there. And right, Reese, Reese Nelson back as well, I think. And Reese Nelson is back. Absolutely mm. right. Let's know in the comments section who you would have in the starting level. And I want to ask you very quickly. Tommy Asfield White? White. Trossard Martinelli? Trossard. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Martinelli. Trossard, I'll bring Martinelli on later on as impact. Fine. There you go. Makes sense. Let us know in the comment section what you would do. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out all the other preview content that is coming out and has come out on the channel ahead of lesson. Don't forget, we'll be covering all of it here from the starting 11 to the watch long match day live and, of course, full time where you'll be able to call in and give us your thoughts. Build your starting 11s as well on the AFTV VIP, not at VIP, on the AFTV Plus app that you can get by hitting the link in the description below. And we'll see you very soon. Many thanks. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.